Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place cares for children from all corners of the country. A home from home, offering hope at times of uncertainty and strength in times of need. Inviting us into their world, we witness difficult decision-making, life-changing surgery, and powerful success stories. In the emergency department, we never know what's going to come through the door next. Theatre staff have to be ready for surgery at any given time. I see you treat critically ill children 24-7. Following the journey of families and their children undergoing vital and life-saving treatment, welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Four-year-old Christian from County Dublin has been a regular visitor to Temple Street since he was born. When Christian was born, he had a bilateral cleft lip, but he had no palate whatsoever. To be very honest, when we had our first scan, we found out Christian had the, the cleft lip and cleft palate. Um, it, it really frightened me. I was very worried. In Ireland, there are about 100 children a year born with cleft lip and our cleft palate. It's not an uncommon condition. I was very scared before he was born. How am I going to be able to feed him? Is he going to be very traumatized? And it wasn't like that at all. You know, he wasn't traumatized at all. He took to the special bottle they have for feeding. When he was three months old, they repaired his lip. They did a lip repair. And when that uh, lip was repaired then, obviously visual it was fantastic. Mr. Early done an amazing job. What he looked like originally compared to how he is today, it's quite a dramatic difference. This was Christian when he came to have his lip repaired when he was three months old. As you can uh, see from the picture, he has a complete cleft on the right side and an incomplete cleft on the left side. What is going on inside is a cleft of the palate as well. And you can just see that hinted at by the fact that there's a great big gap in there at the back. So the surgery involved repairing both sides of the cleft at the same time. And immediately after, this is what he would have looked like. The operation that Christian is having today is a further operation on his palate to improve the speech. His speech, there's no clarity to it yet. He does try very hard to speak but there's a lot of words, a lot of, lot of letters that he can't get his, he's not able to say. For about 20% of patients, um, they will need a secondary palatal surgery to improve their speech. Yeah. But 50% of cleft palate patients will have speech problems, but about half of those will be because of habit factors. Mm -hmm. And the other half, the 20 to 25%, will be because the palate's too short. If you look at a normal palate, uh, the normal palate moves up and down when we speak. If you have a cleft palate, the palate's too short and it can't stop the air coming down to the nose. So you get a nasal tone or you can get air escaping through the nose while you're trying to produce a sound in the mouth. I'm Jill, have a look at you today, okay? He had a test done just before Christmas just to see what the issues were. His palate is still short, the muscle tone isn't right and he's not getting the proper vi vibrations at the back. So as he's trying to speak, it doesn't matter how much speech therapy he does, he's just not getting that connection. Lots of kids, particularly like somebody like Christian, would have try to use a different sound so they would have produced a lot of their sounds from their throat because it's the only way they can get the pressure to make sounds that sound like English sounds. As they get a bit older and um, the children become very aware of their speech and very aware that they're not being, being uh, understood by other people. Christian developed a very good sign system to help himself communicate with other people particularly when he felt he wasn't being understood. Is that about the Easter Bunny? Bunny. Uh, what? You'd like an Easter Bunny? He has his own little sign language communicating with us and his brothers, but outside of that comfort zone, it's difficult for him and he can get 
quite frustrated if he can't communicate with others or they don't understand what he's saying. So this will hopefully help that, you know, in the short, medium term. He does have a lot more surgery to have done over the years coming, uh, but uh, it's step by step. In the emergency department, three-year-old Grace is having trouble with a chest infection. She's three years and ten months. And she's just, she has been like this since she was born. <laughs> it has been ongoing. Grace was um, born in Holy Street. She was transferred down to, down to um, Temple Street when she was about two weeks old. And she was in Temple Street for 18 months, one year and six months, not going home at all. Grace was complicated from the very word go in that she came into the world about seven weeks early. She was delivered at 33 weeks. She was diagnosed with a complicated uh, condition. She has a thing called Worcester uh, syndrome. And essentially that means that she has um, global development delay. Um, she, unlike other children, is, has difficulty swallowing, difficulties breathing prior to having the tracheostomy put in, um, difficulties doing all of the normal things the children would be expected to do, like sitting and rolling and uh, walking and speaking. So there are many of those skills that she has not developed and, and may not develop. Tracheostomy is a little tube or opening that's put in here to try and relieve airway obstruction or blockage of the airway. It's such a huge, big deal for uh, a family, for a child to have a tracheostomy, that nowadays it tends to be last resort. The reason that the tracheostomy was put in was because she was having such major problems with breathing, with handling secretions, with uh, inability to swallow, um, even her own secretions, and that was causing choking episodes. Um, and, and essentially, to save her life, she needed to have a tracheostomy put in. Um, she's had um, chronic lung disease from since she was tiny. She gets chest infections, um, for, like I said, for the past six, seven weeks now, she's gotten it like five times, which is just too much. Uh, just because she's prone to, because of her uh, past record, she catches it quickly and um, no matter how you keep her warm, she still, even if you don't bring her out of the house, she still gets it anyway. And um, that's why she's here today now, to see if we can get that sorted. She has significant respiratory disease and, and essentially when, when a child like Grace gets just a cold, it's probably pneumonia. She's usually very happy and even when she's sick, she's always very, when she's like this, you know she's really, really, really bad. No. Come. Can I hold you? No. She's not herself. She does still require frequent um, admissions to hospital, particularly for chest infections, but um, those visits are less frequent than prior. She spent very many months in this hospital when she was born first in the first months of life, whereas nowadays she's able to spend significant amounts of time away from the hospital. A bed has been booked, I think, for her to stay in, so we don't know how long <laughs> we're going to stay in. While Grace waits to be transferred, Luca Meza arrives on the day ward. We're here because Luca has a little problem with his tongue, so um, he's kind of tongue-tied. A tongue-tie is where the frenum is where the little piece of tissue underneath your tongue that connects your tongue to the floor of your mouth is actually too tight. My sister's daughter had exactly the same thing and like within a half an hour of being born, they cut the, the skin under her tongue because they, they seen that it was uh, tongue tied. She told me like you should get it done if you have the choice. It was completely optional so yeah, we decided to get it done like so. He has had kind of speech delay so they're wondering whether this has caused that. So they're going to release that today under general anaesthetic. He doesn't really say a lot of words at the moment so um, We'd, we thought we'd come in and get it sorted out. Along with his tongue tie, Luca's speech may be delayed due to a much more simple explanation. Luca is very confused because uh, I speak Spanish <laughs> and uh, he try and, and speak Spanish as well, some words, but 
where the Colin speak English, so he understand him too. But all the time he understand more Spanish than English because he is with me every day. <laughs> yeah, he spends more time with his more mother, time. so I think um, that's why he he has trouble uh, remembering the English as well. You know. Luca, I suppose it'd be a very boisterous child into everything, wants to see what's going on with everybody. He never stops. All day he is uh, running. On the go. He's on the go playing. all day, so he literally just wipes himself out and then... Destroy falls. everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can leave him literally for hours and he'll play with it by himself and he won't bother you, like, you know, so... That, that way he's kind of good, you know. After arriving in A&E, Grace was transferred to the top flat surgical ward. She came to us last Wednesday night, came up from A&E, and she'd been unwell at home for about two days. She was diagnosed with an upper respiratory tract infection. They started a, a high antibiotics before, before we came upstairs. So, so immediately we came upstairs, she was like, you know, more, this is more comfortable. Parents have to be trained up on how to manage the tracheostomy, change the tube and how to clean the tube and how to unblock the tube. Um, and I often say to parents at the beginning that within a few weeks, they are going to know more about um, their child's tracheostomy tube than anybody else, than any other healthcare professional. They often find that hard to believe at the beginning. I remember the first time I had to change the tube. I didn't have any idea. But now it's like, you just have to do it. Though you get nervous and get scared, oh my gosh, she's not breathing and all that. But you just have to get going and just do it. You want to go home? Okay, we'll go home soon, okay? It's amazing how they do get used to it and they do get very confident in, in managing the tube. I have to be brave for her. I have to be, to save her life, really. On the day ward, nurses are preparing to take Luca to theatre. Before surgery, I suppose he's like every other two-year-old, he has to fast, so that's probably one of the hardest things about going, coming in here under a general anaesthetic. He wore himself out and slept for about an hour and a half and woke up just in time for the operation. He's been in here before. So. Yeah, but never for surgery. Never we for, for surgery. first time. Okay, so we have We hope that obviously it's they can just sort it out straight away and, and hopefully we'll start talking a little bit more and it won't be so traumatic for him. He was a little bit nervous when we went to put him on the, the actual the surgery bed, you know. It's a very simple procedure. It's just they literally release it. It only takes a couple of minutes. Um, the child's under a general anaesthetic just because it'd be sore if you were to do it when they're awake. current and we use this to divide it and the idea is that this prevents bleeding and you need this to say you'd have to be asleep to do this you wouldn't do this when he's awake okay and that's it he would have went then to the recovery room to come out of the general anesthetic and then he would have come back here to the day ward so it's not very long about 20 minutes 25 minutes in total maybe Theatre, Professor Early is preparing for Christian surgery. Mr. Early is going to lengthen his palate today and work within the muscle in his palate to see if they can help his speech develop more. The only time that's sort of stressful is like these times, you know, when he's got, when you're handing your child over, you know. Uh, he's a little bit older now, so he's a bit more aware. When he was younger, it was a different type of heart to hand over your child and you sort of Although he had all these things, it doesn't matter, he's your child and you love him as he is. And it's sort of hard to let him go through that pain, you'd rather do it yourself. But uh, you know it's for the best and you know at least each time it's getting better for him. These little operations are hard now to watch him go through. You're a little bit worried and you're a little bit anxious, but I know that Mr. Early's an amazing surgeon, so he's in good hands. The reason that this operation is done is that we very carefully listen to the child's speech as they are maturing. And the speech and language therapists are an integral part of this. They tell us when there are problems and what kind of treatment is likely to work. 
in speech therapy, he did well in terms of getting placement for sounds. So he was able to get his lips and his tongue moving for certain sounds, but he wasn't able to build up the air pressure. So when we got concerned about the palate then, at around three, three and a half, we arranged for a special x-ray. And therefore, we were aware that a lot of his, his, his problem was structural as well as habit. And that's when we decided that an operation would be, would be important for him. The surgery itself took about an hour, um, maybe a little over. It was essentially an operation to help tighten the muscles of the palate and help his speech be more clear and get rid of some of the so-called cleft characteristics of the speech. We're lucky to be in a situation where we're getting the help we need, probably the best in the world, and, you know, it's always a step in the right direction, so it's good that way. Usually the immediate post-op period is not too bad with this as an operation. It's not quite as severe as the full original cleft palate repair. Post-theatre, he was a little bit anxious, which again is expected for a four-year-old little boy. It's very important as soon as they wake up after the anaesthetic, as soon as they bring them up, you're there to reassure them. You know, that's very important. Oh, there we go. Some calm down when they see their family, some don't. Like post-anaesthetic, they're just a little bit confused, which again is, you know, that's normal, quite normal for a lot of children. He's been a little distressed when he woke up after the anaesthetic, but other than that, he's been great, and they've made him very comfortable, given him all the painkillers he needs. The surgeons were very happy, and we're really happy, obviously. It went very well. Uh, we were able to find muscle. We were able to bring the muscle together and close the palate. No. After a successful surgery, Luca has returned to the day ward. He's had some pain relief upstairs, so he's coping very well, is nice and comfortable. It's great. It's a little bit of useless uh, skin there, like so I don't even think that it pains, it hurts him like when they cut it. He's drinking away there, um, tolerating fluids, and he's had a light diet, something soft initially, usually. Um, you can give them yogurts, or they can have toast, um, just usually soft toast, but he's doing really well. He has his uh, toast and a 7-up, so he's, he's happy as Larry. That's the first time having 7-up. He'll probably be at me now to buy it for him all the time. Fizzy drinks, you know. Usually we keep them an hour and a half after the general anaesthetic. Um, once his vital signs are okay, um, he's pain-free and he's eating and drinking and tolerating a light diet and fluids, we leave him go home. Usually follow-up is discharge to the GP. Um, a lot of them don't need to come back to the outpatient clinic, so he doesn't actually have to come back again, so he's one of the luckier ones. As Luca heads for home, Grace is also preparing to leave. She's been with us a week and she's going home now, which is great. <laughs> While Grace is here, she had round-the-clock care. Um, you know, usually one-to-one -one nursing because she's quite, um, you know, she has a tracheostomy, so she needs to be nursed quite closely. So she would have suctioning, antibiotics, and regular observations and blood tests. She's much, much better. She's much brighter. She's much happier. She's not coughing as much, and yeah, yeah, definitely she's covering well. Yeah. Christian background. We don't really believe in giving up on her child. When you believe in something, you know, believe it works for you, I think it does work for you. She's likely to have repeated admissions to us. In a child like Grace, because she has an ongoing chronic condition, which is not improving, it is, I suppose, still there with her all the time, um, then it is likely that her tracheostomy is going to be there for the foreseeable future. Anytime I see her smile, I just said, this girl is full of life. So that smile, it, you know, gives me that joy and happiness. I'm happy. She's, she's saying well. Two days since his surgery, Christian is making a great recovery. He was very groggy after the anaesthetic. He slept a lot. You know, he kind of in and out of sleep nearly all day. And today he's backed himself. Was Daddy happy? Christian, you didn't tell me who you slept beside last night. Daddy. Daddy? Did you sleep beside Daddy last night? Did you miss me? Yeah? I thought maybe there might be a miracle at the end that, you know, his speech will be much clearer quite quickly, but no, it will take a bit of time. He'll be seen again by his local speech therapist at about four weeks post-op. 
and then hopefully we'd have a speech therapy at least once a week. We can't really work out how successful surgery has been until he's had at least six months therapy. So sometimes we don't know the outcome of the surgery for six months to a year because it's a combination of speech therapy and surgery that's going to make the difference for improving the speech quality. It's still a little swollen, but when the swelling goes down, we're hoping for a lot more clarity in the speech. But even already, I can hear him saying words clearer. He said Daddy for the first time the other day, and um, it was just amazing. Yeah, really, really good. From the point of view of his speech, we will monitor it very carefully. Now that he can stop the air coming down through his nose, he'll find it much easier to get the sounds. And hopefully then the sounds will come a lot quicker. We always follow up these children for quite a while. It's an unfortunate fact, but further surgery is sometimes required for the palate again. He'll have to have some bone grafts done from his hips into his uh, hard palate because he has gaps through his hard palate, which is what holds your teeth. So he's no space for his teeth to come through, so they're tending to cram a little bit. So he can't have that done until his uh, adult teeth are coming through. Also then maybe his, uh, his nose and his jaws and that later on as he matures mightn't keep up because of bilateral cleft. There's, there's issues there with his, his uh, bone structure. And basically it's one step at a time and, you know, he's healthy, he's great, and, you know, but there is, there's a lot. There's a lot of surgery he'll need to have done. No one gets discharged until they're 18. So it will be my successor who will be looking after Christian in the future. <laughs>